Hey everybody, um, another using Emacs, a uh, little quick one today. Um, I want to show a package that I discovered. Uh, what I'll sometimes do, I'll sometimes look at the Melpa package list and I'll look at the, um, you know, the um, whatever, this is the column, which effectively is the last updated date. So I'll look at that in reverse to show the most recent stuff. And um, the package I found, and I'm going to first do a package refresh here. Um, and the reason I'm doing a package refresh is, um, well, actually, let's do a ah, list packages. Um, that'll do the refresh. Um, I'm doing, I like here, this version number. And the version is going to be, and I actually do this from the website normally. Um, the, um, the, ah, the um, but, you know, these are, well, like, I don't know what order this is in, um, but I, I will look at the version number and that's going to, well, do stuff. There we go. Uh, so I don't know how this is doing it, but whatever. Uh, again, I normally do this from the website um, and I click on that and it gives it to me and I'll see 2020 and the date, etc. cetera. Um, but the package that I want to look at, uh, you'll also notice, I'll just say this, that I, um, um, I'm trying the cloud theme here and we'll see how I like it. I've also done a couple of little things like... Um, I've added a couple other little packages, which I'll talk about later. You'll notice I have my line numbers on, not a big deal. But I'm going to use try, try the package, and it's um, live pi mode, which is uh, pretty cool. And again, I just discovered it, and so let's bring it up. And live pi mode is, um, I'm not going to use it for real until the fall, because I'm not teaching Python again in the fall. So here's how it works. So let's say I'm in a Python buffer here, and um, ah, where are we? And we'll go to live pi mode. Okay, and it splits it. And so now let's go print hello. Um, unexpected indent. Oh, because I have an extra space up there. Okay, and then print hello. Okay, well, it looks like I just echoed stuff. Um, but it's not really just that. So like, let's say we do, um, it's, it's really doing more. A equals 10, you know, B equals 20, uh, C equals A plus B. And now it gives me that result. Or now if I type print C, um, print and notice the print 30. And that's actually pretty cool. Let me actually make all this bigger. Um, there we go. So notice that, you know, in here, let's get this out. And let's say, let's say print hello again. And A equals 20, B equals 30, print A plus B, uh, just to bring it back up. And it's doing this live. Now, this is different than um, running the Python stuff. Like if here, I went control C, control P to bring up the Python uh, interpreter, and if I do control C, control C, it runs it so I can run this here. But this is live running it as we go. Um, you know, so let's actually do something else. Let's make a little routine here. Let's make factorial event. And, you know, yes, it's, you know, it's giving us the error while we're not complete. And we'll say um, if n equals 1, we'll return 1, and otherwise we'll return um, n times fact of n minus 1, a little factorial routine, and why don't we say here fact of 5? And you'll notice here that we have fact of 5 returns 5, you know, and it's showing us this whole thing here, um, which is really cool. Um, the other thing here is we can say, well, we did fact of 5, why don't we say, let's come up here and let's import random. And down here, we'll say, um, you know, for i in range 10, range 1, uh, print, or why don't we say a, and we have a from above, a plus random rand range 10. And notice it doesn't look like it did anything. Um, no module random. So, and I notice I had to scroll up. So I got to spell that right. But now we've got our stuff up there. We've got our printing there. And now a i equals zero, a I, you know, etc. Um, so it's actually showing us a live run, and this could be really cool for both demoing stuff, but also for a student writing a beginner Python program to see what's going on. Now I'd also say that um, this project, this Pi Live project, and I'll put a link on the blog post to it. Um, it works for Emacs. It also works for a couple of other editors. I forget. Which one? I think it works for PyCharm. 
and Sublime, maybe Adam, I don't know, you look at the website. Um, for the w at least one of the other editors it supports, it'll do turtle graphics in the window, which is really, really cool. And um, it doesn't do that for Emacs, but that's okay. Um, it also does one other thing. It also does um, supportive testing. And um, so let's say we have a little, little routine. Let's say we're gonna write a function um, add to, and that would be A and B, and we'll say um, return seven. It doesn't work yet. And what we're going to do here is we'll use Python unit tests. So from unit test import test case. And over here we'll have um, class add test, which is a test case. So we're going to extend test case, and we're going to make some tests. So we'll put in our test case. Um, so what is it? It's going to be, um, what is the syntax for this? Uh, do we, do we have to, so it would be test, uh, let's say, test one for self. And we will just, for this, we will say, do I have to define this? Okay, it's been a long time since I've done the Python stuff for this. Um, and it's going to be self assert equal, or we do any of these asserts, and we'll say, we will assert that add of five and six should be equal to 11. All right, now um, I could just run this, but I'm gonna use the magic incantation. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna use the magic incantation of control C meta D. Um, and it asks me to type in the command. And so it's gonna be module unit test, I think this is how we do it, and z.py, um, and we have invalid syntax um, over here, and we can fix that, and now it runs the assertion. So the assertion error, 7 doesn't equal 11, so let's fix our code, and it works. Um, and then let's add another test, def test 1, ah, test 2. And we'll say, helps if I can write, self assert equal add uh, two and two, which is equal to four. Ah. And that assertion doesn't work. Um, and like if we, you know, we serve 13, both of the assertions don't work. So it's giving us the, you know, the assertions don't work here, it gives us here, but if we fix our program, and bang, it works. Um, so I don't know how useful this test case part is because you saw it was a little finicky with the interface, a little slow. But this overall package is very cool. Um, like I don't know if I, I probably wouldn't use it for my actual development. I would probably just you know use my Control C, Control C to run things, see my results here. What I usually do. But I think for teaching purposes and demo purposes, um, I think this is going to be a very useful package. Um, as I said, I'm not going to use it until the fall, most likely, because I don't see myself showing Python stuff. Um, and using Python stuff in my classes until the fall again. Um, but when I do, you can bet I will experiment with this more. So I just wanted to share it. Okay, that's it. Take care. Bye-bye.